Thanks for watching. If you find my videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. You look at this question and you might think, now wait a minute, aren't IUPAC names exclusively reserved for organic chemistry molecules? The answer is no. In fact, any time that you've been systematically following chemistry rules to come up with a name for a compound, you've actually been following IUPAC the entire time. Now, using principles that I've taught elsewhere in videos that are linked to in the description below, we're gonna start here just left to right naming the metal first, which is of course nickel. Now for metals that always have the exact same charges in any compound, such as metals in column one and column two, which are always plus one or plus two respectively, as well as aluminum over there that always has a plus three. You do not have to indicate the charge of the metal in the name because it's always unambiguous. However, for other metals, such as D block metals like nickel, you do. So I'm gonna lay down a set of parentheses right here. We'll backfill those in a moment. To do so, we have to now look at the anion portion of this molecule, SO4. Now SO4 is one of the polyatomic ions whose names, charges, and formulas are shown here, which you should definitely memorize. Its name is sulfate. So I throw that name onto the end. Now, as you just saw, sulfate as a whole has a negative two charge. So if I have one nickel atom going together one to one with one sulfate, what must the charge of the nickel atom be in order to balance out that negative two charge? Yeah, it must be a plus two. So this particular nickel in this formula is a plus two nickel. Therefore, we lay down Roman numeral twos right there. Nickel two sulfate is the correct name for this compound, which is for this question option B. Now, in case you're interested on the others, what would the formula for option A, which is nickel two sulfite be? Well, sulfite is a different polyatomic anion that I do not require my college students to memorize, but it has a formula of SO3, not SO4, though it still has a negative two charge. Hence, that is the formula for nickel two sulfite. Now, what about option C, nickel two sulfide? What is that? Well, it turns out that anytime you take a metal and bond it to one of the non-metals that are not polyatomic, but just have a single atom, those non-metals are kind of over on the right side of the periodic table. The name that we give to the non-metal portion of that formula is quite simply, it's periodic table name with a couple of letters scrubbed off of the end and then the suffix "-ide", tacked onto the end of it. For example, if nitrogen were the anion part in an ionic compound and it were not polyatomic in any way, we would call it nitride. If it were oxygen, we would call it oxide. For fluorine, we would call it fluoride. For chlorine, it's chloride. Bromine, it's bromide, and so forth. Thus, if we had the name nickel two sulfide, it would have the simple formula right there because its anion is a negative two charged sulfur atom, hence a sulfide. Now, what about our last option, selenide? What is that? Well, that's the analogous thing for a selenium atom. Hence, this would be the formula for nickel two selenide. <laughs>